Uh, such a pleasure to talk to both of you. Thank Mortal you. Engines shows a world. There's a dystopia. London is now this steampunk megalith traveling through the world. There are issues of immigration. There are issues to do with disparity of wealth. Yes. And of course, up to strong, badass, complicated way yes. to yes. So it feels pretty real. Yeah. Tell me a bit about your characters because they're both so complicated and so interesting and are in no way defined by men. They're defined mm. by their actions mm-hmm. and their integrity and their intelligence, which unfortunately all too rare on screen. Exactly. Yes. And it's refreshing <laughs> to see, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, both of our characters, I think, I think Philip Reeve has done such a great job and now also the filmmakers of, of creating this movie in the same way of you know, to have, to write these female heroes, you know, that are all these, like, multidimensional, all the color, all the, all the colors, like you say, like, make decisions based on how they feel and what they want and, and are allowed to make mistakes and also learn and do everything and are allowed to have a huge scar on their faces, you know, mm. and still be, the like, a heroine mm. in, a, in a Hollywood blockbuster or whatever you want to call it. Um, I think it's great. And it's great to play... A character like that and when you're not worrying too much about like you know what you're wearing and if you look good enough or like know that people are like thinking about that all the time mm. and, and it really helped you know having like female producers you know Fran Walsh and Philippa Boyens right producers and writers there on hand all the time that kind of gave you that feeling of that you you know that you are everything that we are as human beings rather than just kind of pretty and sexy and playing that part yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, playing Anna Fang, Anna Fang is such a, a wonderful character because it, you know, learning to embody what it meant to be a warrior really helped me feel empowered myself. And I think that there's an athletic level to her, mm-hmm. you know, the martial arts fighting level. And I was uh, lucky that I grew up doing martial arts and I was doing it as an adult. And so that came in handy. Yeah. But in terms of the mental and spiritual fortitude of what she went through as a child of losing her parents and becoming a slave and finding parts in a scrapyard and, and building her own airship and escaping um, at, at a tender age of like 19 or something and meets you know, Hester's mom, who becomes her mentor, who kind of gives her the, passes her the torch to become this you know, freedom fighter. And, and her journey into looking for Hester, you know, when Hester was a child. And, and, you know, in a way, probably it was her biggest defeat in life to not be able to find her. So when she finally finds mm. her, you know, you see the, her softness for the first time. And, and, um, and that whole connection of the female bond and and uh, empowerment together it's really ex- it was a really exciting yeah. element it's nice to also see you know in a way like uh, women in different stages of of growth mm-hmm. you know and finding their strength and and their character and and to see another woman help another younger woman mm-hmm. go through that yeah. Absolutely, mm. and there is this incredible bond between your characters. But the, the books were written in two thousand and one, but yeah. feel so incredibly relevant. Mm-hmm. And there are allusions to Brexit mm-hmm. and yeah. Trump and immigration. Yeah. Does that make it all the more powerful when you can see how people, how the conversations after this film will really talk about today's world and today's politics? I think so. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, because it's it's unlike a lot of the blockbuster films out there where you get really entertained and you enjoy it and then you forget about it. This is this has something really special. I think same with what you're talking about, mm-hmm, you know, there's mm-hmm. there's all kinds of que- questions raised about um, the way our society is today and the way yeah. our civilization is on a really divided, you know, path. Yeah. Yeah, and it makes you wonder about, like, also, you know, consumerism and how we're treating the planet and how we're treating each other yeah. as people and, and the divide and, you know, and, and it's it's nice to see all the characters, like, in the beginning, they're all on their own journey, so focused, like Hester, for example, on, like, mm. I just need to kill this man, I don't care if I die or whatever. But um, to see people opening up and listening and, and, like, Hester and Tom do to each other and learning about each other and then, you know, when Anna and Hester meet and everything... And, and to fig- when, to see people figure out, you know, what they can do as a whole and how we can be stronger as a whole, I guess. 
Yeah. And I suppose the whole idea of a dystopia existing but promoting mm -hmm. empowerment and action amongst young people. Yeah, particularly absolutely. With exactly. Yeah. exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that is so important today. Yeah. And in a way, I feel like, you know, after the Parkland tragedy, yeah. you know, when the, when the kids organized the, the, the March for Our mm -hmm. Lives, that was, for me, that was like the greatest glimpse of hope, Absolutely. you know, for our future. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think this film speaks to that, yeah. that kind of hope mm -hmm. that we, we wake up and we, we collectively take action. Mm -hmm. So people can go and have a rollicking good time but have really important conversations yes. afterwards. What more yes. do you want? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> There's both, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much as well. Thank you.